Coming up on Inside Wofford Football, the Terriers travel more than 2,300 miles away, but they come to play and shock the third-ranked Grizzlies of Montana, 23-22 to in the opening round of the football championship playoffs. A performance impressive enough to bring a smile to the face of Coach Ayer's grandson, Max Kalinowski, and the rest of the Terriers faithful. Inside Wofford Football, presented by Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, NBSC, Lil Cricket Food Stores, AT&T Real Yellow Pages, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, and Sprint. The Terriers gained 333 yards on the ground, led by Kevius Johnson with 145 yards on 20 carries. And they get touchdowns from Dane Romero, Andy Strickland, and Michael Hobbs. But it's not until the Grizzlies miss a long field goal as time expires they can celebrate one of the biggest wins in school history. Hello and welcome to Inside Wofford Football, everyone. As the Southern Conference champion and 11th ranked team in the country, the Terriers felt like they were not getting a whole lot of respect as the selection committee sent them all the way across the country to face an undefeated Montana squad that a lot of folks thought was the best team in the country. But everybody knows Coach Ayers loves to play the underdog role, and his team won't back down from anyone, anywhere, anytime. Now, how about a little R-E-S-P-E-C? The Terriers turn the ball over on their first two possessions, but the defense holds strong. And the offense gets it going late in the first quarter with a Patrick Mugen field goal to take a 3-0 lead after one. In the second quarter, after the Grizz tie the game at three, Walford goes back on top as Dane Romero takes the pitch and runs it in for a three-yard give Walford a 10-3 lead. However, Montana scores the next 13 points to take a 16-10 lead midway through the fourth quarter. But the Terriers come back, march 81 yards on nine plays, and Josh Collier caps off the drive with a six-yard touchdown pass to Andy Strickland to give Walford a one-point lead. Less than two minutes later, Montana retakes the lead 22-16. But with 32 seconds to play, Michael Hobbs goes right up the middle for a six-yard touchdown to give Walford a 23-22 lead. Still, Montana has one last shot. But Dan Carpenter's 47-yard field goal to win it as time expires is no good as Wofford shocks Montana. 23-22 is the final. When we come back on Inside Wofford Football, we'll take a look at the first half highlights that include a Terrier team overcoming a sluggish start to keep it close heading into the second half. Stay with us, everyone. The gas is good, it's pure as can be. Helps your car to run trouble free. There's coffee and milk, as cheap as you'll find. And best part is you don't wait in line. Little Cricket, they're on the way. Little Cricket, they'll make your day. So what do you say when you need it right away? What do you say when you need it right away? That's easy! Little Cricket dummy. For a hundred years, one book has helped people find things. But some people use a different book. Her book has less information. Which causes problems. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings than the AT&T Real Yellow. So choose the book with AT&T on the cover. The new AT&T. Your world delivered. Welcome back to Inside Wofford Football. With the temperature at kickoff, a cool 13 degrees. Carriers start out a little cold, but start to heat up late in the first half. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser, Tom Henson, and Tom Brown on the call. Two receivers left, one right, man in motion behind the formation. Fake of the dive to Hobbs, pitch near corner. Big seam for Kevius to the 40. 
45. He fumbles the ball. Montana has it at the 42. Back to throw Bergquist on second and eight. He's going to be sacked. The ball comes out, but the official's going to say the play was over. Nonetheless, Matt Norsha with a sack way back at the 46-yard line. Second down, we'll call it a long eight from just outside the 21. Handoff, hop. Up the middle, first down, 25-30. Michael Hobbs all the way ahead to the 33. Terriers first and 10 now at the 34 in their end of the field. Back to throw Collier, puts it up down the middle, intercepted. Pass was taken away from Fen Allen by the strong safety, Colt Anderson lineman down. Bergquist back to throw. Under fire. He'll be sacked back at the 41-yard line. Second sack of the day for the Terriers. Jared McCullough got him. Wing bone set. Turns. Counter give right. Romero has a big seam across the 10 to the 15. He's close to a first down and didn't they get quiet in a hurry. Left one right. Collier. Handoff Marshall. Now a handoff the other direction. An end around and that's a first down run. Dane Romero 20 near sideline 30. Stumbles ahead to the 40. Dane Romero all the way out to the 41 yard line. He picks up 31 yards. First down Terriers. I set this time behind Collier. Man in motion near Romero. Late pitch away to Johnson. Near corner. Takes it to the 40. Backs flank him either side, wide outs either side. Fake of the dive to Hobbs. Pitch near corner, Kevius 30, Kevius 25, Kevius to the 20. He's got a first down. Right footed kicker, good snap, spot down, kick on the way, and Mugen has Terriers the lead. 127 remaining first quarter. Terriers three, and Montana nothing. Out of the gun, Bergquist, single back Hilliard, stays into block, Bergquist with all sorts of time, now he's going to roll right, on the run, fires, man open, that's caught by Mariani at the 30, keeps his feet, and he'll stumble down at the 26. 37 yard attempt from the near hash, good snap, spot down, plenty of distance, and we are tied. 14.45 remaining in the second quarter. Wofford three, Montana three. Montana 4-3 defensive look, pitch near corner, there's with room to the 40, gets a block out front 50. Kevius to the 40, stiff arms his man at the 35, takes it all the way down to the 33-yard line. Romero in motion right behind the formation. Collier fakes the dive, has a seam as he tucks it up and runs inside the 20 down to the 15-and-a-half-yard line. Five, now six on the line of scrimmage in motion left. He'll get the toss, gets a block from Kevius, takes it to the five. He is submarined at the three. Hobbs is the fullback. In motion right, Romero. Hand off. No, it's a fake of the dive. Pitch on the corner. Touchdown, Dane Romero. Terriers lead it. Romero walks into the end zone as the Grizz bit on the fake. 10.07 first half. It's now Wofford 10, Montana 3. Bergquist under center, drops to throw, underneath ball, caught by Allen, first down reception at the 27. This will be a 26-yarder from the left hash, spot down, and the kick is good. We have 5.51 remaining. We are in the second here in Missoula. Wofford 10, Montana 6. First and 10, Grizzly from their 47, handoff Hilliard, wants to take it right, dances to the 50, keeps his feet to the 45, and he'll go down at the 43-yard line. Back to throw Bergquist out of the gun, down the middle with it, man wide open, caught by Bowden, tight end with the catch, knocked over at the 11-yard line, first down Montana, three receivers left, a single man, Allen to the right, Bergquist out of the gun, plenty of time to throw, down the middle, back of the end zone, caught, touchdown, Dan Bowden with the catch. We are one half through, and your score, the number three ranked Montana Grizzlies, 13 and the 11th ranked Wofford Terriers 10. Coming up, we'll take a look at a Terriers running back who might be a little small in stature but has been coming up big his entire career and Saturday afternoon was no different. Stay with us, everyone. Terrier fans, here's your chance to score tickets to a Wofford men's or women's basketball game of your choice. Be the first caller to 864 597 4110. Leave your name and phone number in the message, and you could be a winner. Compliments of the South Carolina Education Lottery.
they pick up their games, pick up their teams, and pick up the pace. Enterprise salutes NCAA student athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. For the last five years, we've heard the name Kevius Johnson again and again, leading the Terriers to key wins. However, it has not always been easy, especially two years ago when he had to watch from the sidelines. Now, Ken Griner takes a closer look at the senior running back and our Terrier in the Spotlight presented by Johns. Kevius Johnson is a player we've heard a lot about here at Walford over the last five years, and he's going out in style being named to the All-Southern Conference team. It's a great honor to have, being that uh, the type of uh, FCS conference we're in and, and the respect we get uh, around the nation. About my teammates, I just thank guys for doing what they do to uh, allow me to have the opportunity to be an All-Southern player. It says a lot about how successful the offensive line was this year, how successful the scheme was this year, and if a guy can make All-Conference as a running back in our system where we share the ball amongst five or six guys who have carries and yards this year, then that says we had a lot of success as an offense. Power and speed. What kind of runner are you? I like to use both aspects of, of my game. Uh, for the guys who try, uh, the bigger guys who try to load up and, and take my head off, I, I like to use my speed and my quickness. For the guys who are a little smaller, sometimes I tend to use my, my strength to, to get through those guys. The thing that he has, he's a low center of gravity guy with great balance and good feet within a tight space. And uh, he knows the game, so he has a good vision, knows when to cut, and, you know, knows when to accelerate. What did you learn by having to sit out 2005? And it just uh, made me realize that life outside of football and how much football did mean to me. And, and you know, I just took advantage of that time just helping, helping others, uh, giving back, uh, help, helping uh, other guys who want to uh, play collegiate ball. Did having to sit out 2005 make you hungrier, so to speak? So missing the whole season, uh, being away from my friends, uh, my team. I mean, it, it gave me a burning desire to get back and uh, uh, work harder and, and, and get to the level that I wanted to. For Inside Walford Football, I'm Ken Griner reporting. And here's a look at this week's fan photo. It's a picture of one of the Terriers' youngest cheerleaders, Kaylee Kaya, the daughter of Heads Women. Coach Amy and Facilities Director Andy posing with the 2007 Southern Conference Football Trophy at last Sunday's NCAA Football Selection Show event in Leonard Auditorium. You can submit your own photos by going to the Submit Your Wofford Photos link on the Terriers page at GoUpstate.com. Coming up, we'll take a look at the second half highlights as the Terriers stay calm despite trailing for most of the second half. Stay with us, everyone. At NBSC, we understand what it takes to nurture something, to take care of it, shape it, watch it grow, like your business investments or your family finance. Here, you have one banker with you every step of the way. Sue, how are you? Hi, great. <laughs> you know, after working together all this time, can you believe it? Mm -mm, I can't. And with us, you can trust one thing. All banking is personal. NBSC. Headquarters in Spartanburg, on a sea of manicured green space, Millican and Company places an emphasis on environmental stewardship and community involvement. One of the many reasons Fortune magazine ranked Millican one of the best companies to work for in America, and why Millican was named one of the safest companies in the U.S. Whether hosting community or partnering with Warford on educational initiatives like the Summer Leadership Institute, the Millican Warford connection is strong. And both are proud to call Spartanburg home. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. Three times this season, the Terriers have trailed at the half, and they lost all three games. This time around, with their season on the line, they picked a fine time to turn it around for the final 30 minutes of football. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser, Tom Henson, and Tom Brown on the call. Johnson awaiting the snap at his 39. Jeremy Marshall back deep, the running of fake. Johnson looking to make left corner. He's to the 45, he's to the 40, to the 39. As well short of the first down, and the Terriers are going to take over on offense. First and 10 Terriers now. 
50, Kevius in motion right, Collier play action to throw, heaves it down the field, he's hit as he throws the ball and it's intercepted, picked off at the 30, return to the 35 to the 37, Quentin Jackson the corner with the pick. Now Montana with a third down call, third and eight from their 41, Bergquist out of the gun, with a blitz and they're going to get him, he is sacked back at the 33 yard line, Seth Goldwire. They work out of the eye. Collier fakes to the up man. Pitches to the deep man. Kiwi is far corner. Good yards. 25-30. Out of bounds. Far sideline at the 32. Second down and 10 from the Terrier 44. Marshall in motion right. Collier running the option right. One tackle breaks another to the 50, and he's high tackled down at the Montana 47. Two receivers right, single back Hilliard, play action Burquist under fire. He'll be sacked back at the 36-yard line by Leighton Baker. Terriers four on the line of scrimmage. Hand off Hilliard, big hole left side, 35 to the 25. He 20, and finally he'll be knocked over at the 18. This will be an attempt from 23 yards from the right hash mark. High snap, spot down, kick on the way, got it. 12.59 to play in fourth quarter here from Missoula. It's now Montana 6, Terriers 10. Wingbone, double play action, Collier wants to throw, heaves it down the middle for Strickland. He's got it at the 50, tackled at the 48 in the Grizzly end of the field. Triangle of backs around Collier out of the gun. And he'll fake the dive. There's the pitch. Far corner. Kevius gets a cut block to the 20. To the 15. Kevius wheels his way inside the 10-yard line. Fourth down and five from the six-yard line. In motion right. Kevius. Play action. Collier throwing far side for Strickland. He caught it. Touchdown. What a play call. What a gutsy, gutsy play call. Well thrown ball by Josh Collier and Andy Strickland just inside the plane of the goal line makes the grab. 7.47 to play in this football game. Terriers 17, Grizzlies 16. Second and eight from the 33. Play action for Bergquist. Plenty of time. Throws far side. Man wide open. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. Eric Allen. It's first and goal. Montana on the right hash. Pitch. Hilliard wants to get out to the right corner, breaks a tackle, jumps for the pylon. He's going to go out of bounds. No, he's in. Touchdown, Montana. Six minutes to play in the football game. Your score, now Montana 22. 17. Man in motion near side. Collier with the handoff. That's going to be Marshall looking to turn right corner on the end around. Collier, forward handoff. Hobbs, he's got a big seam up the middle. 45-40. Michael Hobbs down to the 38-yard line. Collier takes the snap, wants to throw. Puts it up far side. Leaping catch for Justice Joslin at the 33-yard line. In motion right, Romero, handoff. Now they're going to fake the dive. Pitch near corner, Kevius breaks a tackle at the 25 to the 20, stumbles ahead to the 16. They go from the triple I again. Collier, option, near side, toss away Marshall, near sideline 20, cuts it back inside. He has dropped about the 12. The triple I with Kevius deep. Romero shimmies in motion right. There's the toss on the corner to Kevius. He's to the five. Wide outs either side. Romero in motion left. Hand off. Hobbs up the middle. Touchdown, Terriers. Touchdown. Touchdown. Michael Hobbs through the middle of the line. Warford's been running that play out of that formation. Collier options it, and they ran it up the middle with Hobbs, and he's in the end zone. I formation. Kevius in motion right. Collier, pitch on the corner to Romero. Thought about throwing. Throws it to the back of the end zone. Smith leaps. No, he's out of the back of the end zone. Incomplete pass. Michael touchdown run. Two-point conversion fails. Terriers lead it by one. 32 seconds remaining. Mugen into the football, and he's going to hit a ground ball that will roll to one of the deep men at the 26, takes it ahead to the 25, 30, 40, all the way out to the 50. Shotgun snap on four. Bergquist throws near side, caught at the 35, taken to the 30. Here we go. Snap there, spot down, kick on the way, has the distance. No good, no good. He missed it left, and the Wofford Terriers advance to the quarterfinals. He missed it. And the Terriers will play at least one more week. He missed it left. Wofford Sports Information Director Brent Williamson caught up with Coach Ayers after the big win. We're here with Coach after the game. Coach, what a way to win it. Unbelievable. Uh, just a tremendous game.
tough place to play. Probably the toughest crowd we've ever played in front of, but the classiest. Uh, after we won the game, uh, they were great job, uh, win it all, coach, and all that. And uh, played a tough team. Montana's excellent, uh, undefeated, uh, big physical team. Uh, can't say enough about the, just the, the total team effort. Our, our defense, they stepped up. Uh, offensively at the end, we make the drive that uh, that uh, helped us win the game. And uh, Josh Collier did a great job all day managing. Uh, had a couple turnovers, but uh, some of that was on us as well. Uh, I can't uh, can't say enough about uh, just a total team effort. The kids, they, they kept battling, uh, didn't give up, didn't quit, uh, they didn't falter. And, uh, very thankful, very blessed to, to have this group of guys, uh, our staff, awesome job, put a lot of hours in this game, and then to come all the way out here uh, to play, uh, you know, game time, it was nine degrees, and uh, when we left Sparkle City, it was uh, 77, so there was a little bit of drop in temperatures, but our kids responded uh, and, and did a tremendous job for us. Now, you talked a little bit about it, having the three turnovers in the game not coming up with any takeaways on your own and being yep. able to win the game, that says a lot about the guys. That's, that says a heck of a lot about this football team. And um, we, we came up with the big play defensively. Uh, it looked like they were going in for a touchdown, but we, we made them uh, kick a field goal. And uh, that kept it to one score. You, you drive it and uh, they, you know we ran the football, ran it a lot. Didn't throw that much. At the end, uh, they were loading up. They were loading up trying to stop the run, and that, that's when we snuck that one over their head with uh, Andy. Josh delivered the ball. Andy makes a great catch. And then after that, uh, I thought Kevious Johnson, all of our halfbacks that played, great job of carrying the ball, fullbacks as well. And that a key for us was blocking on the perimeter. I mean, we were knocking people uh, down and, and creating some space. And, uh, and then our offensive line, I thought, did a great job throughout the game. What were the thoughts going through your head on that field goal attempt by uh, oh, Montana? You, you know, you, you, you're always going to say, hey, I hope they don't make it. Uh, but, you, you know, we had played a great game. And, you know, you say a little prayer and, uh, you know, you, you hope that uh, – that you know what happens is good for you, but it, uh, if it doesn't work that way, then you know that that's uh, God's will. So uh, we battled, we we did everything we could possibly do to try to make uh, this team successful today, and uh, and we pulled it out. We're just uh, thankful for this opportunity, and uh, from what we understand, we've got a home game next week. So anybody that's watching this back in Spartanburg, uh, we need you in the stands. Coach, thanks a lot. Congratulations. Now let's go inside the locker room and hear from some of the players. It's hard to put words into this, man. It's fantastic, man. I, 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 what I just saw witness today, everybody both sides of the ball, man, is, is what I think is true meaning and heart of the champion. It's a great feeling right now, you know. Nobody gave us a shot. We came in here and I think we looked a little hairy there for a while, but we kept plugging away. You know, and that's, that's the definition of this team, you know, determination, work hard, you know. And we pick each other up. Defense kind of picked up the offense in the first half. The offense comes down, gets a good drive, wins the game. Now let's take a look at the final game stats. Wofford with first downs, 22 to 18. Significant edge in the ground game. 333 yards rushing for the Terriers. The Grizz have the edge in the passing game. Total yards, Wofford with the slight advantage. How about the time of possession Walford has it for 32 minutes and 32 seconds. Penalties has just three penalties for 15 yards. And turnovers, believe it or not, the Terriers turn it over three times. They do not get any turnovers from the Grizzlies, yet they still win the football game. Now let's take a look at some of the other results from the FCS playoffs from this past weekend. Richmond gets the win over Eastern Kentucky, and that means we'll play host to the Spiders at Gibbs Stadium next weekend. Appalachian State gets a hard-fought win over James Madison, 28-27. Massachusetts knocks off Fordham, 49-35. Southern Illinois gets the best of Eastern Illinois, 30-11. Northern Iowa hangs on to beat New Hampshire, 38-35. Eastern Washington defeats State, 44-15. And Delaware knocks off Delaware State. In the first ever meeting between these two schools, Delaware wins at 44-7. Now let's take a look at the Whites. Pine Street Exxon play of the week. It comes with 32 seconds to play, and the Terriers trailing by five. Michael Hobbs gets the handoff, runs it up the middle for a six-yard 
game-winning touchdown. It looks so simple, but it meant so much. The gas is good, it's pure as can be. Helps your car to run trouble free. There's coffee and milk as cheap as you'll find. And best part is you don't wait in line. Little Cricket, they're on the way. Little Cricket, they'll make your day. So what do you say when you need it right away? What do you say when you need it right away? That's easy! Little Cricket dummy. Stay tight in the pocket. Be on time. Is he blitzing? Three seconds until sack. Work your eyes to the left. Stare down that safety. Oh, come on. What's the corner doing? Oh, let's see. Two seconds until sack. We need this. Looking for Harrison. Harrison's completely covered. One second until sack. Who's breaking three? Who's breaking hot? Who's behind? Clark. As many thinks it, then you see it. Highlights, updates, and scores at the speed of light. This is the NFL at Sprint. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. This is where we take an inside look at some of the happenings off the field of play. This week we focus on the cheerleaders and all into being ready to cheer for the Terriers from the sidelines. Hey, get Walford! Walford Terriers beat the Phoenix! We practice Monday and Wednesdays um, from 6 to 8 in the morning. It's hard at times. You can be studying for a test until 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, get up for practice at 5.30, but... You make it happen. Oh, there's um, a tumbling requirement. Um, there's jump requirements. We stunt, um, dancing, cheering. There's a lot that goes into it. It's a different experience in college. College is just a lot more exciting, a lot more high energy game. Just a whole better feel. Those push-ups every week kind of, you know, make it a little more athletic. And this year we've also started um, working with a strength and conditioning coach, so we're trying to work on that aspect of our cheerleading too. It's just made our stunt stronger, um, dance is sharper, it's made everything better. We like to have fun together. We work really hard, but it's a great group of girls to, to get to know each other. Let's take a look at next week's opponent brought to you by Blue Eagle Equipment. First of all, the Terriers will be at home next Saturday. And they will play host to Richmond, who defeated Eastern Kentucky 31-14 in its opening round playoff game in the win. The Spiders got 180 yards and a touchdown from Tim Hightower and gained a total of 278 yards on the ground with the win. Richmond improves to 10-2 on the season. As for the game, we still don't know what time it will be, but we do know it will be next Saturday at Gibbs Stadium. So starting Monday morning at 8.30, be sure to call the Wofford Ticket Office at 5 9 Four zero nine zero to get your tickets to the Terriers' second round playoff game versus the Richmond Spiders. For now, we say so long, and we get to see you next week. Have a great day, everybody. Inside Wofford Football was presented by Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, NBSC, Market Food Stores, AT&T Real Yellow Pages, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, and Sprint.